What is your biggest fear going into this job? I get lost in the tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't um, deliver in a timely fashion the resources and opportunities that, this, that the district uh, really, really demand and need. My fear is that we're not going to come up with the solutions that we need to really move the ball and the needle forward for the next generation. More gridlock is your fear? Well, I mean, we know there's going to be gridlock. So it's how do we deal with the gridlock and how do we reach common ground? Because as Alan said, and I know Terry agrees with, we've got to make sure that the decisions that we make here make the next generation better off than we are today. That's been, that's been the American dream. That's been the philosophy of our government. That's been what's happened thus far. But and how do you have gridlock and solutions? Well, the thing is, is we have to find areas. We might disagree on 50 percent. We might agree, disagree on 50, 60 percent of stuff. What's the 40 percent that we agree on? Can you think of and anything in that 40 percent? We were just that talking we about the deficit, deficit, right? That we're we talking need about to the deficit. More jobs. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I improve think improve our health care, our national security, improve our national education. security is going to oh be critical. God, yeah. But how do you improve education and get $100 billion in spending cuts for a year? Well, i got to tell you, I think one of the things, you know, I spent a year as a high school teacher when I first retired. We've got to get education back down to the local level. We've got to make sure the focus is on the teachers in the classroom, not the bureaucracies that are overseeing them. And I think that's one of the places where you can look and see how do you make some of those cuts. Yeah. We, but we need to give the teachers the tools they need uh, in order to teach, which I think is critically important. So I think it's about setting priorities. It's about figuring out our priority list. Um, and that will affect how we compromise, I think. Do you think in six months you'll be as optimistic as you are today? Well, I've been, been in, so. I've been in combat, yeah. so I'm always optimistic. And I think that America always finds a way when this back is up against the wall. And I think that this will be a launching point. I believe that all of us are, can agree that we are proud Americans and we want to make sure that our country is on steadfast and on a, on a right path. Um, and so I, I am very optimistic that uh, we, we def the American people desperately need us to be uh, problem solvers. And so as long as we can remember that and uh, work towards those ends, I think that we're, 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 we can get there. I, I am optimistic. We live in the greatest nation on the face Absolutely. of the earth, mm -hmm. and we are very resilient. And this is such an honor to be up here in the United States Congress to be able to try to affect some of this change. And so I hope that we're always optimistic because America uh, is a leader and must be a leader for, for the world. And uh, we have an opportunity to affect some of that change. Can I come take your temperature in a few months uh, and absolutely. see if you're still feeling that way? <laughs> absolutely. Look forward Hold to your it. feet to the fire a little? Not a problem. Yeah.